Hello and welcome to Outside In. My name is Steven. Today we're going to be looking at building a short to ground tester. I've spent the last few days trying to get this together. When I first made it, it worked very well, except it was very a little complicated to make. So I wanted to find a better way to make this, to make it more professional. Now the first one that I'm going to make, I'm just going to go and I'm going to show you how to make it. The others, I'm just going to speed through. This is absolutely an incredible tool to have. And I wanted to put a video together to show you how to make one for yourself. Everything that I will be using in this video, I will be linking to in the description. Let's go to the bench and let's get this going. This is the kit that you would get that I'm going to link to in the description. This is five different fuse types that you may have in your vehicle. Maxi fuse, if you use standard fuses, mini fuse, micro or low pro fuses. All of these right here are for standard fuses going to all these different types of fuses. You can replace your maxi with a standard, mini, micro, or low pro. What I also did was I realized that there's a lot of people that have older vehicles that have AGC fuses or auto glass cartridge fuses. And I came up with a way to make my own adapter using these types of fuses. All you have to do is solder your wires to the ends you'll want a positive side and a negative side on your blown fuse to be able to test for short to grounds 20 millimeter and this is a 30 millimeter agc fuse and you'll still be able to create your short to ground tester what i'm going to do to begin with is i'm just going to build the first one and then i'm just going to speed through the rest of the fuses i'll we'll just start with the maxi fuse here adapter i cut heat shrink tubing black to fit that perfectly so you'll have a negative lead and a positive lead. Cut these to the same length. Okay, once you cut these, then you have to expose some wire so you can solder. This is what we're gonna use on the other end. You'll see why did I come up with this version. This is a 12 volt bulb holder for 12 volt bulbs when you get these in the mail they're going to look just like this and what you're going to want to do is you'll just take them and you'll bend them like this now that's the way that i'm doing it you can do it however you want to and then i just took my cutter here and just to make sure i'm getting the right length and then i cut it off and then i will strip the wire back Okay, now this here, it's a black. I don't know why they make these wires black because this is the positive wire is what this is. It goes to the center post. So that's the positive wire, not to black. It'll be good for you to get two rolls of this heat shrink. You can cut these off to the exact length you need. And I want to cover this to make this wire red instead of black. If you're going to get two rolls, I would get the black at six millimeter because it would still shrink down and the five millimeter red on the black the reason we need six millimeters because we need to go over this what we're going to do now is first we need to put our red heat shrink over top of the red wire here before we solder anything together so that way we can get it up in here and then we will solder these two wires together the hot wire Let me try to zoom in here a little bit. All right, now the next thing we want to do is we need to connect the ground onto one of these. It doesn't matter which side because this whole outer shell is the ground. glad I saw that before it was too late because this needs to go over that so you'll want to make sure that you put the six millimeter over top of the five millimeter so you can bring that up into place so now we want to bring the red wire up the red heat shrink and I want to snip off any stray wires that could poke through the heat shrink and accidentally cause a short because we don't want to accidentally cause any shorts 
run this all the way up till it stops and then take the six millimeter heat shrink and run it up over top of this now I cut extra so I could also put a heat shrink over this side and you'll see why in a minute that I'm doing that so now let's shrink the heat shrink on all of this and just make sure your black is all the way down against the fuse adapter okay now that all your wires are heat shrinked I also have a link in the description for these which is nylon zip ties and they're 2.5 millimeter zip ties and they're 100 millimeters long and what you'll do is you'll just take these wires here and you will put a zip tie to zip tie them together it will also help with strain relief And then clip the end off and there you go your first one is made so are you liking this so far I love this thing it's a lot of fun to use it is good for DIY but it's also really good for mechanics that want to have a tool set up for specifically finding short to ground and these are absolutely beautiful for that purpose so let me go ahead and finish the rest of these I'm going to speed up the process so you don't have to sit and watch as I do every single one of them gotta remember stay in the video there <laughs> let's create our buzzer to be able to plug into the tester and this way we'll be able to use our tester as a buzzer instead of a light bulb which is how I like to do it because it's easier to hear a sound than it is to look around and try to keep looking back to see a bulb coming on or going off while you're paying attention to pulling your wires and bending them and testing them to try to find a short okay so let's get these heat shrinked Now also what you can do with this buzzer is you can just, once you get these wires soldered together and heat shrunk, then you can turn the buzzer around like this, uh, running along with the big wire, and then use two zip ties to zip tie the buzzer to the wire, so that way it's not just dangling around. But you do it however you would rather do it. Uh, this is how I'm going to do it for me. Hopefully this will fit. I haven't tried this yet. Uh... Just try to get them around all the wires so you don't have a bunch of wires just dangling around this barely fits through that hole of the buzzer so yeah you'll need the 2.5 millimeter zip ties so it'll fit in the the mounting holes for this buzzer
All right, now you have your buzzer. You can use a use a light bulb in your tester. And now you can use a buzzer whenever you need to use a buzzer in your connector. To be able to still use these as they were originally intended, I'm going to add one of these to one of the sockets that we cut off of these adapter converters. So now we can still use this as it was intended originally. So we don't lose that ability. When you're using it like this, it doesn't matter which is the negative, which is the positive, because this is now gonna act like a normal fuse would. You might want to cut a length of your red heat shrink. So both of these now will be red. these together Yeah, just make sure you don't get your heat shrink too close to your shoulder joint like I just did. But luckily the it was long enough that I could just cut off the shrunken part and put it back over the joint. Whoops, we still want to keep this the right length. So when we heat shrink these together, they're the right length. The red goes all the way down and covers up the black. Okay, so now there's our adapter that these were intended for originally, I believe, to be able to turn all these fuses into a standard fuse. So now we have that ability still. We're not losing that ability. All we have to do is plug this in here, and now we can convert the micro fuse into a standard fuse holder, and the same with all the others as well. So there, what a great idea, Stephen, yes. We have one left, so now we need to create our extension cord. First, we need to put this, the socket on, so we can make this an extension cord. So let's first put that end on. So let's solder up the ground. Pre-solder this wire, connect the ground, run our red heat shrink up in here and cover up the black. Like I said, I don't know why they made those wires black that should have been a red wire, but that's China for you. Now we need to put heat shrink on this side. Shrink this. Zip tie that up. Because I do believe that zip tying this together like this and putting the heat shrink on the other side of this will help make this a good strain relief for the wire. Okay, now we have that end. Now we just need to make this end of the wire. Put our connector on this end. Solder those together. Okay, and just before you use this, now as long as you match the black wire here with the black wire here, or the red here with the red here, I always like to be 100% sure this would be the positive. And let's test that. Make sure there's continuity in the positive on this plug and positive on this socket. 
and there is and then test the ground the ground would be the casing of this and the casing of this so there it's all hooked up right yeah i don't know i mean i know that's probably a dumb little step to take but i just like to be extra careful to make sure that it's right but there you go there is your 20 foot there is my 20 foot extension i don't know if that's what you want to do but you make it however long you want or make several sections i think the best thing to do would be to make a five foot section a 10 foot section and of another 10 foot or a 15 foot that way you have 5 15 or 30 feet that you can run your tester uh, depending on what length of vehicle you're working on okay so there you go if you do it the way that I just did it you'll have seven so you'll need it like six inches a case for this six inches by about nine inches and possibly you could get away with eight inches i'll see if i can find something and add it in the description for the case that i find and while i'm thinking about it let me go look right now and see what i can find